My name is Nicolas Levra. I'm an international and European law professor at the University of Geneva, and I'm also the director of the Global Studies Institute at the University of Geneva. Among other research projects during the summer of 2017, I was asked to coordinate an international team of legal experts to produce a report entitled Catalonia's Right to Decide, asserting in legal terms the right of Catalonia to organize a self-determination referendum. So the issue I would like to address in this presentation is why and how should the EU intervene in conflicts of sovereignty on its own territory. First, I will give some preliminary warning. All these things that I'm presenting in this intervention concern only conflict of sovereignty, which are non-violent conflicts. If there is violence involved, then it's a totally different set of rules that should be implemented, and I will not discuss these in the presentation today. Second, this conflict of sovereignty needs to be based on democratic decision, legitimate democratic decisions for both or all parties to this conflict. If it is not a democratic process, then again, my reflections and ideas do not apply to such cases. Third, when I say democratic process, it means that both parties to the conflict need to respect democracy and human rights. It is not a requirement only for one of the parties, it's for both parties that these uh, principles of human rights and democracy need to be respected. And fourth, this presentation does not concern interstate or genuine interstate conflicts. For example, territorial conflicts that we've for example, had uh, as regards the Gulf of Piran with the border between uh, the Slovenian and Croatian uh, countries, the maritime border. That's not the type of issue we're dealing with. We're really dealing with conflict of sovereignty. And this is why I will try to propose a framework and a process to launch a potential conflict resolution mechanism at the EU level. I will try to develop my thinking in four points. The first one will be about framing the question, and it may be the most important, how we frame this question of conflict of sovereignty. Second one will try to explain how the EU can be a proper frame to seek a solution or several solutions. Third, I will try to suggest how a European process could be launched or at least prepared. And fourth, I will eventually have a look at potential possible outcome of such a process. So first, a uh, general point, framing the question. Actually, and contrary to what the organizer of this workshop suggests, I would like to frame the question as a conflict of sovereignties and not necessarily a conflict of territorial sovereignty. Why? Because if we introduce this reference to territoriality, then it means that the outcome, the solution, will be a territorial solution. And I strongly believe that there are many other types of possible solutions, institutional solutions, which may not include territorial restructuration of uh, these sovereignties. So this is why I would prefer to deal with conflict of sovereignty and not conflict of territorial sovereignty. Second, I think the research for an outcome to such conflict of sovereignty has to be based on the people's right to self-determination. This right is recognized equally to all peoples according to Article 1st, Paragraph 2 of the UN Charter. It is also guaranteed by the 21966 Covenant on Human Rights. Actually, it's the only provision that is the same in both conventions. And by the way, it is Article 1 of both conventions. Uh, it's a specific type of uh, human rights. I will have the occasion to come back very soon on that, but it is a human right. And actually, this human right has been recognized as a right erga omnes, meaning a right that has 
the capacity to impose and needs to be respected by all state, every and each single state. This has been recognized as such by the International Court of Justice in a series of decisions in um, 1995 concerning Timor-Leste. It was a conflict between uh, Australia, and, uh, Australia and Portugal uh, in the advisory opinion on Kosovo in 2010 and most much more recently in 2019 on the Chagos Island issue. And very interesting for us in the European context, it has been recognized as a right regardless by the European Court of Justice in decisions in 2016 and 2018 concerning Western Sahara and the uh, agreement between the EU and Morocco. So, being a human right, it means that human rights are foundation, foundational for uh, the EU. Actually, the Article 2 of the Treaty on the European Union lays down human rights as foundation for the EU. This is very important. And even though people's right to self-determination is not a right specifically guaranteed by the uh, Charter of Human Rights of the EU, it is, as the European Court of Justice said, a right ergonomist coming from international law and that therefore binds EU, its institution and the member states. Also, people's right to self-determination is the foundation of modern democratic states. Actually, it is because there is a sovereign people which is exercing its right to self-determination whichever way it wants that you can justify having different polities with different political preferences across Europe and actually even across the, the globe. And naturally democracy is also at the foundation of the EU. Article 2 uh, also puts democracy as a building block of the European integration process. The third element I want to bring in the framing of the question is that I strongly believe EU needs to offer an effective solution, not just a process so that both parties will waste time and wait until something happens, but it will be important that the EU offers a genuine and reasonable outcome for both parties in such a conflict. As the Canadian Supreme Court had the occasion to say in 1998 about Quebec attempt to secede from Canada, if the decision to secede is taken democratically, in that case by Quebec, then there is a political conflict, not a legal conflict. And I think it is important to admit that also in European framework, it's not a legal conflict, it's a political conflict. And so if we look for solution at the EU level, we're looking for political solution, not for legal uh, action. Right to self-determination cannot be enforced through legal action. It is a right that will give rise to political debate. So in the EU, we actually have, especially about the value of the EU, this Article 7 on the Treaty of the European Union, which allows for some reaction and even sanction on a state that would be defaulting on its obligation under Article 2, meaning violating the fundamental principle on which the EU is built. But this solution is ineffective. It is not working. We have now a long-lasting conflict between uh, the EU on the one side and Poland and Hungary on the other side, and we can see this process is not working properly. So, seeking for solution at the EU level, we need to look for effective solution and not trying to go for nice-looking institutional uh, process, but which leads to nowhere. So now, why is the EU the most proper frame to seek for solutions to such sovereignty conflicts? Well, as I said before, the right of people to self-determination, and if we take examples in Spain, for example, in this conflict that exists between Catalonia and Spain, the right to self-determination belongs to both. Sure, Catalonia, and they can vote in favor or not, uh, of self-determination, and again, not voting in favor of uh, 
becoming your own polity is not renouncing to the right of self-determination. It's a way to exert it and to accept that actually your future is part of a larger political community, a larger people, which could be the Spanish people, which also has a right to self-determination. This is why we may have a conflict of sovereignty, because at some point, one people or one community of people within a country will decide that it forms a people which wants to have its own polity. And then the larger group does not agree with that. The difficulty is that the implementation of human rights under international law is not given to international organs, but it is for member states to implement human rights. And here we see the difficulty because this very specific human right uh, puts in conflict the respect for the human right and actually the capacity of the state to continue its existence as it, it was before this human right was claimed. So here the conflict cannot be reconciled at national level. And at the same time, you cannot put it immediately at the international level because that would mean precluding the solution. Basically, if you go to international level, you recognize the status of subject of international law to one of the second party to the conflict, the one who is calling for autonomy and for recognition as a state under international law. So if you move to that level, you already preclude the solution. So this is why EU, being neither a state nor the international community, EU is a very uh, appropriate level to have such political discussion. Actually, second point, if we come back to the 1998 decision of the Canadian Supreme Court, the court say it's not a legal issue. Don't ask us judges to solve this problem. It's a political negotiation, but the negotiation had to be done according to the principle of Canadian federalism, because they are in Canada. So it would be the same in the EU. Actually, the solution for the conflict had to be looked within the EU, taking into account the principles on which the EU is grounded, especially this principle that we have in Article 2. Respect for democracy, respect for human rights, including the rights of people belonging to minorities. This is all written in Article 2. And further, because in the Canadian case, they just have to respect the principle, but there are no institutions to harness or frame this political debate between the two conflicting parties. In the EU, we do have supranational institutions, and I strongly believe they need to play a role to offer solution to such conflicts. Third point, the outcome of the conflict is known. Actually, it's written in the treaty at the foundation of the European Union. Very few people have noticed, but Article 1, the first article of the Treaty on the European Union, says in its second paragraph, I quote, this treaty marks a new stage in the process of creating an ever closer union among the peoples of Europe in which decisions are taken as openly as possible and as closely as possible to the citizens. So, the peoples of Europe, they are the main beneficiaries of this process of European integration. And it is just normal, legitimate, that every single people of Europe requests that it is a beneficiary of this process of integration, as a people, recognized as such. So yes, the outcome is to be recognized as a people in the European Union so that you can participate to this integration process. But naturally, being recognized as a people, as Article 1 says, does not say which form this recognition has to take. So it, leave, it gives some leeway to the parties to find a solution, and maybe a solution with the European Union. And it is important to have leeway, otherwise you cannot have a negotiation. And again, as the Canadian Supreme Court said, both parties have equal democratic legitimacy by hypothesis. And so none of them can trump the other. Both need to find a solution based on their own democratic legitimacy, respecting the principles which uh, are, one, the right that all peoples 
have an equal right to self-determination, this is the UN Charter, and second, that the European integration is for the benefit of all peoples of Europe. And last point, within the EU, the threshold for the solution may be lower than becoming a state under international law. There may be intermediate solutions, I'll give a few ideas in my conclusions, uh, and therefore, maybe it's easier to find a solution than just having this black and white uh, choice, either your state and international law and part of the territory goes with the population outside of the existing state, or you remain within the existing state and your legitimate claim for recognition as a people with its own polity is turned down. So for all these reasons, I'm really convinced that the EU is the proper place to deal with such conflict of sovereignty. Now, how to launch this European process? I'll be rather quick, but let's remember it's not a legal conflict, it's a political conflict. So I don't believe that going to the European Court of Justice is a solution. Naturally, there have been violations of human rights, as it is the case in some situation, then the European Court of Human Rights can be seized after a long process to check whether there was violation of human rights or not. But it will not solve the conflict of sovereignty, it will just guarantee the respect of human rights for everyone involved in such conflict. Actually, I think there is a model for intervention or actually for setting a frame for intervention by EU institutions. In 1993, the member states of the EU, there were only 12 at that time, met in Copenhagen and they had adopted what is called and known as the Copenhagen Declaration on enlargement. At that time it was not clear whether all European states could become EU member states. And it's the Copenhagen Declaration that says two things. First, yes, any European state that wish to do so may become a member of the European Union. But second, there are conditions to be respected by this candidate to accession. So, this uh, Copenhagen Declaration was both a commitment by member states that yes, they would take on board other European states, enlargement is possible, but those who want to join, they cannot do it at any uh, condition, they have to respect some rules of the game. And this Copenhagen Declaration gave the rule of the game. So I propose that the European Council tries to elaborate such a declaration for this conflict of sovereignty on the territory of the European Union. It would be addressed first as a commitment of the Member States to find solution, and second to all these nations without a state in Europe, that, yes, they could find a place, but here are the rules of the game. So, last, I'm sorry to be a bit long, what are the possible outcomes of this process? I see three possible outcomes. The first one, we could call it national reconciliation, somehow in the process of negotiation between the two conflicting parties, there is a transformation of the largest polity, a reconstruction of a new state inclusive, of both parties in conflict, for example, moving towards some type of federal or confederal solution, there are possibilities, and that's a very possible outcome. Second, we could envisage seriously reforming member state representation in the European Union so that it's not only the government of the whole national polity, but you have some other form of representation for all the peoples that coexist within member states of the European Union. I'm not talking about minor reforms and maybe a bit more rights of committee of the region or whatsoever. No, a fundamental reform, which would probably also include diminishing the rights that the current member states hold within the European institution. But clearly, I'm quite convinced that if those involved in this conflict of sovereignties within the EU could get a proper access to decision-making process at the EU level, that would be a very positive outcome of this conflict and that could solve the conflict of sovereignty. So, the idea that there could be an EU internal en enlargement, meaning that actually those parties that want to separate from the state they're within could be recognized as a European state and become member states of the European Union. 
That's a possible outcome. The difficulty, in my view, is that in that case, and President Juncker said so in 2017, in that case you would have so many member states of the European Union that the European Union would become dysfunctional. And then what would be needed would be a fundamental reform of representation of member states within the EU institution comprising maybe 100 and 120 member states. So that brings us back to solution number two. So yes, I really believe there is a way for the EU to get involved, to set down principle in a declaration on how such conflict of sovereignty have to be solved within the EU. And that also implies inevitably some transformation of the status of member state within the EU and the representation of the peoples of Europe within this largest polity that is the EU. Here are my view on the reason and the capacity of the EU to offer a solution to conflict of sovereignty on its own territory. Thank you.